Hi, this is Erin Harner from Cornell Wellness. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about healthy cooking at home. Today we're coming at you for Fuel It Friday, and uh, we're taking your questions and uh, giving answers depending on what you're asking. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about healthy cooking at home because so many of us are home quarantined or just um, self-quarantined. We're asked not to go to the grocery store often. We're asked to stay home. We're working from home. Our kids are home. Everybody's at home, so we're doing more cooking at home. Um, there's been a lot of articles in the national press about you know more people cooking at home. You know there's some things about comfort eating, but the th thing today I really want to talk about is how to make healthy cooking at home work for you and your family. So the huge advantage of cooking at home versus eating out, and a lot of us don't have the option to eat out right now unless we're getting takeout or delivery, but the huge advantage is really less salt, less fat, and less sugar in the food that we're eating. Oftentimes, we would never use as much salt, fat, and sugar as they do in the restaurants or in the stores. Um, so cooking your own food at home can be hugely advantageous from a health perspective. Also, many of us have stocked up on long storing pantry staples, things like beans and grains, rice, uh, quinoa, things that last a long time, canned beans, dry beans. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about how to use those in your daily life and in the meals that you're making. Um, also, I'd like to share a little bit more about the simple plate with you. So this is something that we use with clients at Cornell Wellness. Um, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, so I do a lot of um, in-person nutrition counseling sessions. Now they're all via Zoom, but uh, if you can see this diagram here, we talk about if you want to try and make your meals, your plates look more like this. So on the one corner up here, we have protein. Down here, we have high fiber starch. Over here, produce. And this produce category could be non-starchy vegetables, leafy greens, or fruit. Ideally, lower sugar fruits if possible. Um, so this is something that we try to strive for. And if, as you notice, like half of the plate is really produce. When we think about things that store a long time, oftentimes we're drawn to things like the high fiber starches, things like, you know, the beans and the rice and the grains and um, breads and all of the things that will store a long time. Um, the protein options that store a long time, things like beans and lentils are great. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about how to use these things in your life and really focus on the produce side of the plate. So I have another plate, and this is um, something that you can do at home with your family. It's a pretty fun activity that I do with a lot of clients to help them think about how to do meal planning and think about how to make these proportions and portions on your plate mix work for you. So up here we have the produce section. So just some, some produce ideas that I have, and if you want to get out a piece of paper and do this with me right now, you know, split your plate in half, ideally about an eight to 10 inch plate that you're using for the meals. Um, we've got produce on one side, we've got protein in a quarter, and we've got high fiber starch in another quarter. So over here we've got carrots, beets, uh, green beans, asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, snap peas. These are all considered non-starchy vegetables. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just making a list of the foods that my family likes to eat. These are, this is just an example. This list could be way more exhaustive for this purpose. It's not um, just an example. So as far as leafy greens go, we've got sprouts, kale, salad greens, collard greens. For fruit, we've got apples, blueberries, strawberries, pineapple, pears. Again, just an example. If you're doing this for your family, make a long, long list. Include as many things as you possibly can. And if you want to, for right now, you know, star the items on this list that you have in your freezer, you have in your fridge right now. Um, over here on this side, we've got lentils, beans, hummus, eggs, chicken, turkey, venison, tofu, and tempeh. Lots of different options as far as protein. If you're a plant-based eater or a vegan, you know, obviously focus on the vegetarian sources of protein. But these are just some things to jog your memory or to keep in mind. Lentils and beans are excellent sources of protein, so don't count them out. Um, so down here at the bottom, high fiber starches, we've got brown rice, quinoa, millet, whole grain breads or tortillas, oats. These are all high fiber starches. They're gonna help your, keep your digestive, digestive system moving along um, and help slow down the absorption of the carbohydrate in those foods. We also have sweet potatoes, potatoes, squashes, particularly winter squashes like butternut or acorn, and also corn. So these are some of those foods that we, were, we would consider starchy vegetables. So as you can see, made our plate and we made lists of the different foods that can be really, really helpful. So last week I did a video on meal planning. So you can actually use this chart really well to do your meal planning. So basically you choose what's gonna fill half your plate with produce, what's gonna fill a quarter of your plate with high fiber starches, and about a quarter of your plate proteins. 
if you were doing um, a bean or lentil dish or something like that, that could actually count as both of these if you wanted to, or they could just be a protein or a starch, depending on what, um, what you're eating or what you're having it with. So there's another philosophy with cooking at home that can be really helpful, and it's called cooking once and eating again and again. So let's say you made, let's use our chart again. Let's pick some things from our chart. Let's say we made a stir fry. Um, so we stocked up, we got some stir fry vegetables, we put them in the freezer. Or we have fresh vegetables, you know, whatever you've got, as many vegetables or produce as you can get in your diet right now to help support your immune system, the better. Um, it's going to keep you healthy and get your body the nutrients that it needs. So produce is really, really important. So we'll build our meal with some brown rice, some, um, we'll, we'll go with frozen right now. So how about a bag of frozen uh, stir fry vegetables? And then over here for this quarter, let's do some protein. So if you do meat or um, poultry, you could do something like chicken. Or if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you could do um, tempeh or tofu would be a great option for a stir fry. So we've got all of our quadrants hit. We've got produce, we've got some um, high fiber starch, and we've got some protein. So we can take that meal and have that for dinner tonight. Let's say the next night for dinner, we made a lot of brown rice the first night. So brown rice takes a little longer to cook than white rice, so some people shy away from using it. So if you're going to take that long cooking grain like brown rice, it takes a little longer. Or if you have a pressure cooker or a multi-cooker like an Instant Pot, it takes a lot less time. So this is a great time to break those devices out. But uh, let's say you made a big pot of brown rice the first night and you had a stir fry. The next night you could do something similar using the base of brown rice. Like let's say you make rice and beans with some sauteed vegetables. So using those beans up as well. Um, or you could do like brown rice with fried rice. So adding a bunch of vegetables to the already cooked rice, maybe cracking some eggs and um, sauteing some eggs or scrambling some eggs and putting them in with the fried rice is a great option for another dinner that could be built on the dinner that you already made the night before. So the thing that took a long time, the brown rice is already done and you're just gonna scramble that up. So fried rice, it can be done in maybe five to 10 minutes max, very, very quick. Another option would be, let's say you wanted a dessert or something else to go with it, um, a snack or a breakfast, porridge. Um, so you take that brown rice, you made a big pot, a big, big pot. <laughs> so you take that, um, the leftovers of the rice and you can use those to say, let's make a rice pudding. You could use um, cow milk, you could use almond milk, you could use uh, coconut milk. Any of those milks are, are um, fine depending on what your needs and your dietary preferences are. And you could turn that into a rice pudding with some cinnamon or some cardamom. Using those spices can be really, really helpful to help support immunity, help support your body, and um, add a lot of flavor and nutritional punch. So those are some great options um, as far as how to cook once and eat again and again. You take one ingredient or multiple ingredients and you combine them into different meals. So you're um, sort of making the most, uh, most um, getting the most out of the effort that you're putting into the, something that takes a long time. Same thing like if you were to cook a big pot of um, black beans, for example. If you're not used to cooking beans from scratch, uh, um, soaking them overnight and then cooking them the next day is great. Um, it'll usually take still one to two hours, depending on the type of bean, to cook those beans on the stovetop. If you have a pressure cooker or an instant pot, a multi cooker, or something like that, you can do it in a slow cooker. It's going to take a lot less time. Um, so the biggest thing with this is embrace the family meals. If you have kids at home, try to be present with them at family meal time. Um, you may be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner if everybody's at home at the same time, or if you have a roommate or housemate or parents, or whoever's living with you, whoever's in your family unit, um, try to really take that time to be present with them, especially children. If both parents or one parent is trying to work, it can be really hard to do everything and we don't expect you to be doing everything right now but family meal times can be a great time to cook together to eat together and to spend some quality time together also um you know be sure to express gratitude there's a lot of things going on in our environment that we can't control and there's a lot of things that we can control sort of within our household and within our family unit so expressing gratitude or thanks has been really shown to be helpful to increase our positive outlook in life and get through this really challenging time Again, this is Erin Harner from Feel It Friday at Cornell Wellness. If you have any questions or anything that you would like me to address next week, please leave your comments in our post, and I would love to read those and answer them next week. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day.